The Process, a podcast about creativity and experimental music. In the world of experimental music, outcomes and accolades for creators can be uncertain and at times seem far and few between. Therefore, creators and practitioners of experimental music must embrace the one thing they will always have complete control over, the process. This podcast aims to understand this creative process by listening to new works and discussing them with their creators. Each episode focuses on one creator and their music. Understanding how and why they create can inform aspiring creatives and help audiences better understand and navigate experimental music. I'm Dr. Doug Bielmeyer, and I'll be your host as we explore the world of experimental music, creativity, and the human need to find purpose in their world and lives. This is The Process. Violet Knox is an electronic ambient duo from Boston, Massachusetts, led by Des DiCarlo and Andrew Abrahamson, who came together as a group of collaborators to transform their musical energies into dark ambient sonic sound experiments. Collaborators in Violet Knox include Alex Desjardins, Fen Rothstein, Noel Dorsey, and Karen Zanes. Violet Knox just released their fifth release, Eris Wakes, On today's episode, we listen to the track Eris from Eris Wakes on Infinity Vine Records in the U.S. and Omega Project in Germany. It's our fifth release. It's our second pandemic release. Yeah. Um, and so maybe the story about this one starts in some ways one album back in terms of the way that our, our sort of creative and recording process uh, was you know, sort of adapted to not all being together all the time. From Whispering Galaxy. Yeah. From, Whis- from Whispering yeah. Galaxy, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, in Whispering Galaxy, we weren't, we really didn't see much of each other physically and, and um, were kind of passing tracks out back and forth so that people could react to things and then assemble it into a whole, um, really taking bits and pieces of what people were doing and then adjusting what, what we were doing on this end in response to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and Eris Wakes has been different, sort of coming out of that, Des and I were playing a lot more together, actually, the two of us, you know, in in the practice space, and we were the ones who were sort of available and ready to do that. And we found that we were really interested in spending a lot of time on tracks and, and really giving something more complete to the people who are collaborating with us. And so that was a, that's a big difference in the way this this record came around is that we, uh, Des and I, worked those tracks a lot before they went out to 
you know, Noel and, and Fenn and Karen and, and Alexis. Um, so that's, that's the big difference in the recording here is, it is much more finished before it even went out to the other people. Yeah, I don't think it was something that was intentionally planned. Um, it just sort of, I think, organically happened mm -hmm. that we were definitely available. We were totally into diving super deep into the music. And for me personally, um, it really helped me a lot through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I just decided that this was what I was going to truly focus on and give all my energy, or the majority of my energy. Yeah. And uh, it really helped. You know, I just kept the vision on like the music. Yeah. And uh, Andrew and I are very disciplined and will practice track and rip over and over and over and over. Not many people I think would tolerate that. But this sort of got to a point where uh, the music really started moving like in a, in a different direction. Yeah. And um, you know, working together as a duo, you know, and we really decided that uh, it was kind of more pure and uh, minimal in some ways, um, but that also could provide um, tracks to other people that they could really work with, I think, as opposed to the past where it was maybe too busy. Yeah. Well, and it changes with two people working on something in that, you know, if, if you want to play something over and over again, and there's two of you there, and one says, you want to play it again? And the other one says, yeah, sure. <laughs> and it's funny how quickly things um, escalate in terms of how, how complicated the decision is in, in any venue when you add one more person, two yeah. more people. And so it's surprising how easy it was to focus yeah. in a different way. Very with, focused. Yeah, with just the two of us, you know, mm -hmm. working as a duo. You know, it's interesting because uh, going back to uh, Whispering Galaxy, um, you know, at that time when I had uh, spoken to you on the podcast uh, about it last season, you, you had mentioned like maybe there was some doubt that um, – maybe doubt's a strong word, but there was some apprehension about being able to do this project, Violet Knox – not in person, not as sort of a, a group of people kind of collectively making something. But now you're even talking about you've refined it even more now. So now you're kind of giving, you know, the, the rest of the members of the group something even more polished and finished. H how did you feel that process went? It was it was great in a lot of ways. And then it was tricky in other ways because we were um, one thing that I wouldn't do again <laughs> is that we sort of sent finished tracks out to everybody all at once to, to sort of to choose and to, you know, to find what they wanted to add. And in a number of situations, people heard the same place to put something in. So things come <laughs> back in and then you have a collision. And so in um, a, in an upcoming release that we have in which we're working in a similar way, we're doing it um, – cyclically yeah. so Des and I have done the, the bass track but then we're passing it to one person it's coming back in so I can mix mm -hmm. that stems out to another person back and then that so that it can build that way in right. um right yeah I think that, that we definitely learned from this process um but for example um Alexis mm -hmm. that was one of our synth players uh now lives in Switzerland Great. And, uh, but he is a really important member and still contributes. Yeah. Uh, you know, Noel Dorsey is working with us, Karen Zanes, mm -hmm. uh, Ben Rothstein. So, um, yeah, it's definitely been a learning process. And I think that we are perfecting as to how to do it next time mm -hmm. better. What people add when they add all at once to something mm -hmm. makes it a little more difficult to have a unified whole. Mm -hmm. And so everybody has sort of a vision of the way that they're shading the thing you passed out. And there's a little bit of, of dissonance between those visions that you then have to reconcile because mm -hmm. they haven't heard each other. Right, right. And so, in, in, and so you're doing some work, um, artistic work on the, on the mixing end to get those things to be in the same world together. Whereas now, you know, when we're doing this passing around, each person is reacting to everything that's happened in the past already. And it sort of builds on itself that way. And that's the mystery and magic, yeah. too, of getting the 
it's super i can't wait to hear what yeah. noel yeah. did yeah. you know like and it's always like yeah. really cool like everything came out so great i think for for the songs you know it's interesting too because i wonder if there wasn't this impetus or there you know the pandemic um, not to say anything positive about the pandemic, but if there wasn't this impetus, do you think you would have changed your process at all? Or do you think this was inevitable just with people moving? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would have happened as fast. I think it was on that, on that path, but what, what probably would have been four years was a year. Yeah. yeah. Very hard. And also, you know, I, I really consider us as a, we're definitely a collaborative yeah. project. Yeah. I mean, at this point, Andrew and I are the core writers. Right. Um, but, you know, for instance, with a German comp that will be coming out mm -hmm. uh, probably at this point, maybe June-ish. Yeah. So, you know, we'll continue to collaborate yeah. um, moving forward, you know. It's funny, too. There's like a whole other process, too, for when you're asynchronously jamming or collaborating there's like uh, there's still you know just like if you were all got together in the practice space there there's like kind of protocols and ways of kind of improvising together but it, now it's, it's so it's just it's like delayed but there's just a different different set of rules i feel like often i have like an intuitive feeling about people yeah. that's how i've connected i think with everybody in the band and i was yeah. like following you know nick for genics yeah. he did all this like really beautiful music yeah. and and I was saying to Andrew, like, you know, I'm making friends with him. I really want to collaborate yeah, with him. Yeah. And he added a track. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it, it's so good. Yeah. And, so. It, and I'd make another note along the lines of the collaboration. We've really only talked about the music part of the collaboration. Mm -hmm. And and it's been, I think, important both to, to both of us to work with other art forms, too, at the same time. So just this mm -hmm. past weekend, we did a... Um, the thing with Callie Chapman, mm -hmm. in which we're doing music, she was doing mm -hmm. the dancing, mm -hmm. and then we have, uh, you know, visual, digital visual artists who will, will collaborate along the show. So it's being a collaborative process. It's cross media is that way too. And the more open it is, the, the happier we are in terms of what what the end results are for individual events and you know media output. And Well, let's talk a little bit about specifically, uh, we've already heard on the podcast here a little bit of uh, Eris, the second track on the album, and uh, it kind of flows very, very uh, seamlessly from the uh, first uh, track, Spaceport 5. So was that something, were you thinking about just doing a 30-minute song and these are just, you sort of have created, you know, sort of posts or ends and beginnings, or were you thinking them uh, as individual ideas? We think of them as they're individual ideas, but when we present them live, mm -hmm. they're always blended together so yeah. that, mm -hmm. you know, the set doesn't have mm -hmm. um, any silence in it, any down points. Mm -hmm. And so we, we try to morph them together, but when we're writing, when we treat them as distinct, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but, but then frequently when we're doing things for live, we realize that we really like something that was really the transition between two songs and then which song does it belong to right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know sometimes you just cut it in the middle and let it give a little piece to each of them yeah. and i think that makes sense in the live show setting obviously like having one continuous thing 
you know, when we go and see a movie, it doesn't stop at the end of, you know, a scene and say, it wasn't, you know, clap now. Wasn't that cool? You know, <laughs> like, uh, it, yeah. it just continues. Um, and it's one of the nice things about a kind of a DJ aesthetic, really, that's one of the key things about, about DJing is, is make sure that the, the performance doesn't stop. Yeah. So that I, I like that aspect of, of a performance is yeah. that it's not discrete sets of things. It's, you know, a path you follow through from the you know, beginning to the end. We definitely like to drone and do ambient noise in between. So it's like this one solid <sighs> big wave of 30 minutes. One of the things I really liked about Eris is the sort of, it felt like a slowly uh, slow building fire to me. And I just loved yeah. how organic and um, uh, how Mayo was kind of a track like this too, but that it just, it sort of built and it just kept, you know, getting more and more complex, but then also just building this uh, momentum to it. Um, but I think right out of the gates, something that's really striking is the, uh, the vocals that we hear. And um, Des, I think you were saying this was kind of an interesting collaboration uh, with one of the members, uh, Noel, and um, you mentioned something about how that may be a little bit different than you had done in the past. You know, when we give her a song or anybody, whoever, she definitely has like full reign to create yeah. whatever she feels. It's not like we're telling her, write this, sing this way. Yeah. So you just, yeah, she has a very intuitive vibe that really completes the songs. Um, but Andrew and I were just talking last night about how Eris actually was trashed many times. <laughs> it was a very well, trashed four yeah, times. <laughs> it was a really difficult, and it took us a long time to complete that. Mm. I'd say by the time that Noelle added her vocals was when it was like really finished. Why did it quote unquote keep getting trashed? Was it just, it was, it, sometimes you have like finicky songs, right? They just won't, they won't. Just didn't, I really go by feel and very visual, yeah. you know, it's like just, it just, we just didn't, uh, it doesn't feel yeah. good or this part doesn't work. Is it okay? Does it sound all right? Um, so we just, I think we kept reworking it, reworking it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then by the time we got to recording and I think past the tracks around and people started contributing, mm -hmm was when it really came together. And in the, when we talk about it being kind of trashed four times, um, it, it was a funny song because we would get really excited yeah. about it. And then it just wouldn't go. It. Like it's it wouldn't yeah. go again. Won't be so we could yeah. rework it again. It's like, oh, the song is reborn. This yeah. is great. Some songs, they get that new thing yeah. and then they start to fly. Yeah. And this one just jumped off the ground and then fell flat <laughs> like you know, four times before the final one. It was like, oh, okay, this is working. This is actually working now. One thing I really was dying to ask you was, and I'm sure a lot of, you know, the listeners of the podcast are interested in this as well. What, what have you, what have you learned from release one to release five? And, and it can really be anything. It can be about the process. It could be, a, you know, about marketing, really anything. What, what do you think you've really, you know, besides just the joy of like bringing art into the world and like, you know, having your, your place in the world, uh, maybe often through music, what, what have you learned from the first release to the, to the fifth? Nebula was really uh, very improvisational drone noise mm -hmm. band mm -hmm. uh, with, we had four to six people mm -hmm. um, and we did a lot of, experimental music a lot of jamming mm -hmm. uh, and i think that was sort of like the 
beginning kind of essence of Violet Knox mm -hmm. still carry that through, although our songs have become more formatted, but not like in a commercial right. way. Just structure, we have a structure, but there's still total elements of experimental, uh, you know, whether we're doing ambient noise or um, textural stuff, but um, that has definitely, I think, inspired us to where we are today. Yeah. And then when I think back on it, um, in, in terms of the way that we've approached things creatively, um, we were at the time of Nebula, a band that was about adding things. Mm. So everybody was putting more stuff in and we become much more about selecting and taking things out now and, and have found the freedom in that. That's given us a way to be improvisational without cluttering. Yeah. And I think that that's what we're able to do now is, is treat the songs with, with fluidity mm -hmm. And know everything that's there. Where it is, you know, back in the sort of nebula area, you were reacting to the things that you heard and ignoring a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so if you like, and it, you know, it builds it this builds a good soup, mm -hmm. but it, it I I think our tastes have changed in a way that we're more attracted to sort of a minimal approach mm -hmm. and to taking out distractions and leaving only the essential pieces. Yeah. And we're really good also, I think, very sensitive at listening to each yeah. other. Um, uh, there's also, I think, you know, in the process of like Future Fast that was on Sleep Fuse Records, um, UK label, uh, we were working with Alexis when he was here uh, and Fen uh, was active in that project. I think that process with that record, we were really getting into a lot of textures and um, chronic stuff and to the point where we had to really, really listen and be really sensitive to each other, not to clutter. And I think that that's something that Andrew and I are really good at. You know, if one of us is too loud, mm -hmm. you know, we tell each other or we turn down, um, not to bury each other's parts, um, to really listen in kind of a different way, you know, to, to allow those beautiful sounds to kind of all come through. Yeah. We, we, we developed a much more um, effective sort of musical communication. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a part of that is having worked together for a long time. And part of that, again, is, is working as a duo because mm -hmm. you can talk to each other and make adjustments between two people. Sure. And when you have three people in the room, all of a sudden there's another person there who mm -hmm. either is listening to a conversation you're not part of or has, you know, has opinions or... So I, I think working as a duo that way has, has given us a, an open communication channel that's allowed us to talk about the music when we used to just play it out, yeah. you know, and yeah. yeah, there's definitely a lot of discussion, you know, mm -hmm. during our writing process yeah. um, and as we're trying out, you know, uh, different tones and parts and things. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the goal for this album and what, what do you hope it, it achieves? Um, I would say, you know, releasing it, uh, we have like a lot of reviews set up, airplay, you know, I've, I am like the publicist for the group sure. <laughs> um, and, you know, really target, targeting like a European audience is what I've been doing. So really, we've really developed kind of our own niche um, and certainly open to uh other labels. I noticed this release, um, it, it'll be a, a, a dual release or it'll be released both on uh, Infinity Vine Records as well as Omega Project. Um, is yeah. that just a happenstance or was that a, is there a specific reason that it's being released on, I, I am assuming they're two separate labels, is that, is that correct? Or? Yeah, so Omega Project is in Germany, okay. um, he's digital, yeah. uh, but he's really helped us uh, in that market. Great. Um, as far as getting airplay uh, connections and some, you know, very good uh, exposure, you know, that we may have not been able to sort of find ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then Infinity Fine Records uh, is Karen Zane's records, which is like a long time 
member of Violet Knox. She's doing her solo project, but still very active mm-hmm. in leasing. Um, and I really like working with Karen. Um, she does like a lot of the, the band business with us um, because we really do it like a DIY style. Mm-hmm. And have a lot of control over, um, you know, like the vision and what we plan to do. Um, and so we're doing, I think we're, you know, in our own way, we are successful. Uh, in in yeah. terms of the two labels, I think it's that they, they have a complementary set of contacts. Yeah. yeah. And so there's not a lot of overlap between who they're going to have. Um, yeah. sort of able able to promote the record too yeah there's no reason why an individual can't be on multiple labels or if they can take you know uh infinity vine releases this omega re- releases this and maybe there's another label in europe that wants to release it there's nothing wrong with that and i think that you should look for as many opportunities as possible and people you know artists can do this work themselves i think that artists think that they have to find other people to do these things for them but you know i've um, really proved that to myself that you know you can really promote your own music um there's plenty of blogs and labels out there you just have to kind of do the homework and connecting with them mm-hmm. um and if you you know work hard enough at it you'll definitely succeed <laughs> so yeah and if I could revisit your previous, your last question, just briefly, sure. Doug, in terms of um, like what we want to get out of this release, I would say it's um, it's more uh, fruitful connections. Yeah. I mean, more more things that turn into uh, things like the we we had a number of remixes from the past releases, which uh, it's really enjoyable to work with other artists that way. So both you know, different kinds of media collaboration, collaboration with other artists who are interested in contributing things to our tracks and those remix projects. That's what I would like to see about out of it is, yeah. is more growth into other people's world. Well, uh, folks, this has been fantastic. Um, thanks so much. Um, it's always great to talk to you. Uh, it was great to have you back on. And, um, you know, there's always a lot of learning that, that I do uh, listening to you all talk about your music and uh, the process. Um, before I let you go, let's talk a little bit about where we can uh, listen to and find out more about um, Violet Knox and also about the new release. So basically, we'll be available on all digital platforms and can Spotify, you know, wherever you buy your music. And most, most of the social media updates are through Instagram. Yeah. So Violet Knox on Instagram, you'll find everything from there. That's, um, the, I think our link tree is probably in the, in the yeah. Instagram. So that's, um, go to Instagram, go to the link tree, everything leads out from there. Yeah, you can, you know, see all our videos through the link tree uh, on YouTube videos. Uh, but yeah, I post the most on Instagram. Thanks to Dez and Andrew for sharing their time and music with us. As always, if you like this episode, please check out other episodes in the series, like subscribe or leave a comment on your preferred podcasting app. I'm Dr. Doug Bielmeyer, and this has been The Process.